Hi and welcome back to the AGS tutorial. In this video we're going to talk about um, using inventory items on objects in the room, uh, how to do that. I've got a couple of emails uh, and messages from people asking how to do that. So that's what we're going to cover in this video. What we're going to do is we're going to have, um, if you remember in the main hall we have a closed closet door. Mr. Donatello is in there. So we're going to let him out. Um, I'm going to give Sammy a key that he can use on the door to unlock the door and open the door. Um, so let's let's start by by creating the um, open door object. In this uh, in the main hall we have a closed door which Mr. Donatello is, is in, but we need to have another object for the open door. Um, and and so we'll we'll just right click um, in the room, say new object here. The image that I'm going to use is 470, and that creates a um, an open door image. Now I'm going to drag it into place, and it looks kind of strange in the editor to have both a closed door and an open door, but in the game we're only going to have one of these objects visible at any one time. So in the game you're not going to see them both at the same time. Um, I'm going to initially when you start the game, this closed door should be visible, but the open door should not be visible at all. So I'm going to set the initial visible property of this open door to false in the properties window. Visible is false. So that way um, when we run the game and I'll go ahead and do that. I'm going to change uh, Sammy's starting room um, to the main hall, and I'm going to set his x and y coordinates just very quickly to somewhere in the middle of the room. So if I run the game now, you'll see that the closed door is not visible in the room. We just have this, this I'm sorry, the closed door is visible, but the open door is not. So what we want to do now is give Sammy a way to open this door and then we'll hide this closed door and we'll make this um, open door visible. So let's do that now. There's, if you created the default game uh, like I did, if you look up in the inventories items, you'll have one that's already built for you called iKey. And since that's exactly what we want, we'll just use that one for right now. So if I double click on inventory item key, I'm going to go down to the properties of the key and there's an item here that says, there's a property that says player starts with item. Right now that's set to false, meaning the player doesn't start with the item, but I'm going to change that to true so that, so that Sammy will start the game with that item already in his inventory and we don't have to worry about giving it to him. And then we can use that key then to open the door. So how do we do that? Well, we'll go back to the room. If Sammy uses the key on this closed door, then we want to make the closed door invisible and the open door visible. So what we do is we select the closed door object, we go over to the events of the object, and then there's an event called use inventory on object. And that's the event that we want to use here. We want to say when the player uses an inventory item, namely the key on this object, we want the, the object, the door to open. So we click on the ellipsis, and that creates a function for us called OClosedDoor use inventory. So what we want to do is we want to say, first of all, before I do this, let me do one more thing. Go back to the room. I forgot to name the, uh, the open door here. So I'm going to click on the open door. I'm going to name it open, open door. And then I'm going to name the, uh, put the design, and under design, the name of the object itself. I'm going to say, oh, opened door, just to give it a name. That way we can refer to it in the script. So going back to the script then, when the player uses an inventory item on the door, now at this point we don't know what the inventory item was. If the player had 500 inventory items in their inventory, we don't. We want to know which one did they use on the door. We want to make sure it's the key. So what we do is we say if the active inventory item is the item that the that the current that the user is currently using from the inventory. So in other words, when you play the game um, and you select the key from your inventory and use it on the door, that key then becomes the active inventory item. So we want to make sure that that active inventory item is the key. So what we want to do is we want to say if C Sammy dot active inventory equals, and remember we use the double equal sign, I key. Now by default that key item um, was called I key, I standing for inventory key. So if the active inventory item is the key, then we want to hide the, the closed door, so O closed door dot visible equals uh, false and show the open door o opened door dot visible equals true okay let's see how that works I'm gonna run the game 
Now the door is closed right now, and if we did everything correctly, I should have a key in my inventory. I do. It's right there. So I'm going to select the key, and I'm going to use it on the door. Okay, and then what happened was, now we see that it happened correctly, the closed door disappeared and the open door appeared. But notice that Mr. Donatello is still yelling things from the closet, so we'd really like to turn that off. Um, another thing that we'd like to do is have Sammy walk over to the door before he opens it. That sort of gives the player, you know, the illusion that he Sammy actually did open the door and that he didn't just open it from wherever he was in the room. So let's do those two things. Let's have Sammy walk over to the to the door first, and then once he opens the door, let's have Mr. Donatello stop saying things um, and maybe you know say say thank you to Sammy or something like that. So then in our closed door use inventory item, right before he uh, we set the visible properties of the doors, let's have Sammy walk over to the door. So let's say C Sammy dot walk. Now it wants an X and a Y location, so let's go back to our room. We want Sammy to walk about to this location here, which is X248, Y118. So 248, 118. The blocking style will be block and walk on the walkable areas. So that will have Sammy walk over there. And then at the end now, we need to have a way for Mr. Donatello to stop saying whatever he was saying before. We could do this with global variables, which I'll get into later, but for now, we'll just do it with a, um, a, a variable in, defined in the room. What I'll do is I'll go up to the top of the room script and I'll define a variable. I'll make it a true or a false variable. Now, a true, a true or a false variable is a, called a Boolean. So I'll type bool, which is short for Boolean, and I'll say is Donatello in closet. And this will be true if, Don, if Mr. Donatello is in the closet or false if he's not. It's a way for the game to know whether Mr. Donatello is, in, is stuck in the closet or not. So is Donatello in closet? We'll make this default to true because when we start the game, Mr. Donatello is in the closet. So we go back down to um, our use inventory item um, function. And after we've set the visible properties on the doors, we want to say Mr. Donatello is no longer stuck in the closet. So is Donatello in closet is false. Now we need a, a way to use this. Remember in our repeatedly execute, this is where Mr. Donatello is saying things in the background. So here we want to check before he says anything, we want to check to, to make sure that Mr. Donatello is in the closet before we actually have him say something. So here where we, we check the, the timer, remember we created this timer. We say is timer expired? If timer is expired and is Donatello in closet, in other words, and Mr. Donatello is in the closet, then we want to do this. If Mr. Donatello is not in the closet, we don't even want to have him say anything. So let's run that and see how that works. Okay, so right now Mr. Donatello should uh, be in the closet and he should be saying something. And we have to wait 10 seconds for him to do so. Okay, so he says, Sammy, are you still out there? Now if I use the key on the door and let him out, Notice that Sammy walks over there, and now we've let him out, and he shouldn't, Mr. Um, Mr. Donatello shouldn't say anything anymore. I'll wait about 10 seconds. I think it's been about 10 seconds. So we can see that that worked, that Mr. Donatello is no longer um, saying anything. Another thing to notice is that if I go to a different room, if I go upstairs to the party hall, and come back down to the main hall, Notice that the door is still open and Mr. Donatello is still in the closet and everything like that. So the room saves state. It knows where it was, what, what the state of all the objects and everything were the last time you were there. And it keeps that, it keeps that same um, state for all the objects for every time you enter the room. So that's useful. You don't have to continually, every time the player enters the room, you know, to figure out wh where was this door last time and where was this closed door and where was Mr. Donatello. All that stuff is maintained by AGS and it remembers everything for you. So that's really what I wanted to talk about in this video. Um, in the next video, we'll do a couple of more things, like um, we'll make Sammy be able... Right now, Sammy can't walk into the closet because we um, we limited him to not being able to walk into the closet when the, cl when the door was closed. So we'll be able to do a couple little things like that. And then we'll have Mr. Donatello say something to Sammy as soon as uh, he opens the door, saying, you know, thank you for letting me out. So join us in the next video, guys. Hope this was helpful.